Okay, let's get started. Uh, this is the, well, one of the videos in the third section of the Data Basics module, which is all about trying to understand how to examine and represent categorical data. We talked about numerical data last time, about representing it in tables and data matrices, but here let's talk about some categorical data, specifically cross tabs, contingency tables, cross tabulations. Those all mean the same thing. It's all the same stuff. So the learning objectives here is to use basic techniques to understand categorical variables and the information they have in them, and specifically here to understand the information that is in contingency tables. So let's remember this basic principle that you probably haven't seen enough times yet. It's a pretty important one. So contingency tables are how we represent two variables at once that are categorical. Now sometimes it's ordered categorical, sometimes it's unordered. You can even use a numerical variable that doesn't have very many values to it, very many potential categories to it, but uh, it gets really cumbersome to do that. So instead we usually use, um, use this only with categorical variables, whether they're ordered or unordered. Now this is not a contingency table that you see here. This is just a frequency table. So this is the results of a survey where a bunch of people were asked how often they use their seatbelts. It's a frequency distribution. So here are the frequencies and there are the percentages. And this is what people said. A, a cross tabs or a, a, um, a contingency table adds in another variable. It's two variables at once, usually two categorical variables at once. So here we have one variable that we, just like we had before. And you'll notice over here in the totals column, we have the same numbers as here, 499, 176, 124, 499, 176, 124. But now everything is broken down into subgroups. And that's what we mean by representing two variables at once. By taking the answers here and breaking them down by the answers here. By the way, that's exactly the same as saying the answers here and breaking them down by the answers here. They just break each other down there. Then we've created um, a 2D represent representation of two variables at once. Two dimensions because there are two variables. So ask yourself a little question here. How many women said that they wear their seatbelts some of the time. We should have said 66. It's this number here, female, some of the time. Now there's going to be a total column here. Sometimes there will be a line separating it. This is kind of APA format here, which some people think makes it a little confusing because the total isn't separated from everything else by a line. But that's the way we do things in APA. And APA is the Nazi of paper formatting, so you just have to live with that. Um, but the totals, this is everybody who did it all the time. Everybody who said most of the time. 66 plus 110 is 176. And the totals down here is everybody in this column. All the females, there were 630 females. All the males, there were 367 males in the study. But here we can see patterns according to the frequencies in those individual values. And in fact, this table gets used to build all sorts of other tables. So here's this cross tabs of seatbelt use by gender. And let's add something. Um, well, let's talk about the, the row margins and the column margins. So sometimes we talk about these as being uh, in, in terms of the rows, like any given row abstractly. We, we put n row. So n is the number of things. It's the sample size. So it's n for the row. And then these are n for the columns. We can expand this a little bit more by, and actually make it more useful for certain things by putting percentages in there. So here we put total percents or total percentages. Now, sometimes people put proportions instead of percents. Some software programs choose proportions instead of percents. And so by each value, you have the percentage of the total sample size. The total sample size is down here, 997, because it's the total of rows and columns. Um, and that's 100%. So this is each value's percentage. Now, it looks a little ragged, but often we, we offset these to some extent. Actually, I probably should have lined up this digit. But anyway, um, apparently I wasn't feeling the game that day. But often we offset these or put, put them in italics or something, because otherwise it gets pretty hard to make sense of what's going on here. This is all the same stuff. This is one row just expressed two ways, just expressed as frequencies and then as percentages. This table 
could be made with different kinds of percents. We saw total percents there, but there are also much more useful things, which we call real percents and column percents. So this is a study of 170 participants who uh, identified with particular parties and had a particular sex, male or female. A row percent is what we get by taking the frequency of a particular observation and dividing it by the number of observations in that row. And that's a proportion unless we multiply it by 100. So you'll see proportions sometimes, sometimes you'll see percents. A column percent is taking the frequency of a particular observation and, and dividing it by the number in the column and then multiplying by 100 to make a percent. And total percent, you just do that but with the total number in the entire study. So here's some row percents. Put some highlighting column things here. So in this case, you'll see each row is going to have 100% of the total because 70% plus 18.89 plus 11.11 11 makes 100%. So what this is showing you is what percentage of all males is this? Democrats may, are, make 63 of 90 males, which is 70% of all males. Independents are 10 of 90 males, which is 11% of males. So we can say, what percentage of females are Republican? 25% of females are Republican. What percentage of everybody is Republican? 21.76. So that's when, this is what happens when you do percents by rows. Or we could do percents by columns. And this answers the question something like, what percentage of Democrats are male or, or are female? Of Democrats, there are 98 Democrats, 64% of them are male. 36% of them are female. So we can do that with any of these other ones as well. Even with the totals, you can say what percentage of everybody is male or female. Well, about 53% of the sample is male, 47% is female. This is the same information. The numbers are the same, the frequencies are the same, but the percentages are different. And this is a key thing we constantly have to ask ourselves when we're messing with numbers, not just stats, any numbers. When someone says percent, you always have to wonder, percent of what? So this is total percents. You take every number and you divide that by the total n in the study, and that gives you total percents. This is actually not very useful most of the time. Most, most of the people don't really like to look at total percents. But you can see some patterns in them sometimes. Usually we go for row or column percents, depending on what question we want to answer. So back to this basic principle, and we're done.